after 7 o'clock, we we'll open up the um, September 27th meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Approval of minutes for September 13th. Did I, anybody get to read them? I read them, and uh, I, I I believe they're appropriate, and I, I move the September 13th minutes. I, I second them. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Next one is uh, COC for 242-1313, 509 Waverly Road. I'm Michelle Fox, representing Waverly Oaks Condominium Association. Um, the reason I'm here today um, is this dates back to 2021. In July of 2021, we put forth, um, we, were, we had a construction, a structural engineer come and check out our decks because they're 15 years old. So we came, uh, had them come out, check our decks. We found out that six of them were deemed unsafe and out of code. So we requested a permit to build, uh, rebuild, completely knock them down, rebuild six decks. And at that time, we found out that a certificate of completion, or compliance, excuse me, had never been done when people moved in in 2006. So, um, so it, it, it was 2001, so 15 years, um, a certificate of compliance had never been completed by the builder. So we couldn't do that. So we moved forward, um, uh, hired a structural engineer, uh, hired an engineering firm um, who said that they would complete this and do what we needed. It has taken major legal action against this engineering firm to complete what he needed to do. Um, and so that's why it has been a year and a half. We finally got them to send Amy some stuff in, July, uh, in June. Um, and we were able to complete two of our certificates of compliances. Amy asked for some additional information from this engineering company, um, and they have continued to fail, um, and they're the only ones who hold these records. So it has been very difficult. These two units have been two years without their decks. They have unsafe decks. We keep saying the importance and the safety because it's the only way they can get out in case of a fire. Um, and we d I'm here today. I think Amy knows that we have been doing everything we possibly can to try to get their cer certificate of compliance completed. Um, we even did the cleanings and everything else. Um, we're just really struggling to get this engineering firm to help us out. We have just hired the lawyer again to help us complete this process. I'm here trying to see if there's any way, because we have been showing that we're doing everything in good faith to get the certificate of compliance done but we need these decks rebuilt because it's a matter of safety and looking for a way to possibly get a builder's permit, get these decks and know that we are doing everything we can to try to complete this certificate of compliance because it has been, um, what are we talking, 16 no. years? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> then, Michelle, I just want to make sure which units we're talking about. Units um, four and six. For your first two. So the these down here. It's hard. Those where my cursor is. I believe so. I'm trying to look at it. it's hard to, for me to see. But they're yeah. the very first two and they're the ones that I believe abut because we were able to get the other four done because they, they those two abut the wetlands. So what do you see? You you need four more decks? No, just, just four were approved. We were able to um, get, get the get approval for four, but we have two that I guess are on the wetlands, okay. and so we were not able to get a. Are they going to be in kind replacement, which means the same size? Same size, everything. everything. Exactly the same size. They were done. This, they were the other four were done the same exact way. So, same size, nothing different. Just trying to get them in code and safe for the, okay. because they have not been able to use their decks for um, two years now. Before we, I have a question. Can we? Can we institute an enforcement order to get them done? Yes. Yes. 
What about an emergency certification as opposed oh, to that might be qualified for emergency? Yeah, the, no. the, 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 the cleanest way to do this, in my opinion, is to, is to do an EO. It, never mind, this is a COC, never mind the, the expired order. They, they can deal with that as they deal with it. Mm -hmm. Just because if it's a public safety thing, go, go with the. Whatever, yeah, in my opinion, whatever. Go with, quickest, go with the enforcement easiest. order and, and, and yeah. stay away from the discussion on the rest of it. I, I think, anyway. So, do we have a small project application pending? Or no. They've done the. What well, they could do, they've done. These would right. eventually require an NOI. And then the. No, I think they would be small projects. Small Permits. Project. As if, in, if, if in it wasn't a matter, in right? Kind. If it wasn't a matter, because they had an open order, yeah. they weren't eligible to apply for that. Right. So I so kind of put the brakes on it. So it, it's procedure. It's, yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, I see, see the situation, and I see the player, and yeah. not, I guess I'm not surprised. Yeah. But I don't think the issue of the decks would affect the okay. the outcome of you know yeah. the out, the overall order. Okay. And you you're talking to three board members that really don't. We're, we're trying our best. We just really don't know even this language. And unfortunately, a property management switched. We switched property management mm -hmm. companies, so they have not been any help. So, right, or Amy has been dealing with me. We're trying to get me. the decks built. Without, so just, with so what would be wrong with just uh, an EO? What'd you say? I'm no, sorry. Trying to get the decks uh, built. Nothing wrong with Just that. trying to get without, the decks without without the engineer. You can deal with him later. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I, I was very polite because I didn't know I was on camera, so I didn't name any names, but you all know what no, I'm talking about. That's not something about, so. we should discuss anyway. Yes. Um, so that, that's a business. Yep. Um, but but, but I, I, I have no objection to enforcement. Right. Yeah. Any questions, Jack? Joe, what do you think? Well, Jack just asked me a valid question. I think the answer would normally be yes. And is you know, we would if we were doing this, we would typically put a timetable on when they must get apply for a certificate compliance. They want to. They it's did. Like they, they have. Yeah. I mean, we have the request. It's just that the, the as-built plan has some missing information that only the engineer can, can give me. Um, and I tried to outline some of the things that the association can provide, which is, you know, contract with a third party to do the O&M for the stormwater. I mean, that's their responsible, responsibility anyway. Um, you know, making sure the wetland markers are out there, you know, those types of things that they're capable of doing, but some things um, need the engineer. And we can go through that list another time to see, you know, how critical yeah. it is. But, and, and, but, but I don't want to do is I don't want that procedural issue right. to hold up the, the issue of getting right. the decks done. Right. So I think that we would normally want a certificate compliance. So do they. Yes. They've already applied for it. Yes. So I think that's already moved off the dime. Okay. So I'm, I'm all set. I have no other issue. Um, my opinion is on. EOs stay away from the, the COC. Okay. There's one question. Is, it, is this, a, this is not a stamp plan, It's right? an excerpt of the as-built plan. I just wanted to show you where the decks were relative but to you do the have buffer. Stamp, you do have a stamp Yes, we somewhere. do. Okay. Yeah, it's just it lacks some information, that's all. Okay. Sean? Sure. Sure. Uh, no questions. All right, so uh, you want to recommend an EO? Well, I'll move that we issue uh, enforcement orders to facilitate the repair of the decks. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention. One abstention. Okay. Do you, uh, do we want to set a date on this, or some type of date um, for it to be completed, or do you want to just how long do you need to? I, how, I, how long do you need to get the decks fixed? How long do we need to get? Yeah, well, we're trying. We're fighting time um, here, right? So we're going to oh, issue. A, we're going to issue an order that's valid. Right we would away. like to get them done before yeah. this. Can we do it with two months? Could you do it in two months? Yeah, I, I'm having a troubles now getting the construction guy to follow up with me. But you know, um, so I, I would hope so because in two months, then we're going to have snow you know on the ground. There's no skin yeah, off on right, right. Let it go. Let's give them until June first, two thousand twenty-four. Right, I agree. But yeah. we do hope to get them done in the next month and a half so I can get my neighbors off my back. Yes. Just give you a point, okay. wide open window. Also. All right. And again, um, Amy will tell me what I need to do, or do I have to, we, do we have to apply for something, or can I call well, you, the, well, you need, can I call? You need to apply for your building permit. Okay. So, but then, he did, the same person who applied before, he could do it. Yes. Us, correct. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yes. All right. so and so good. there's three decks or two, two decks? Two decks. Two. All right. Are there any special conditions that we need to consider under this enforcement order? Um, I think we'd, we'd want a pre-construction meeting with the con contractor. Um, 
I don't know, maybe some erosion controls and then a post construction. The deficiency in the framing or are, are the footings? The, the, I guess the, the, they're very tall decks, yeah. and the, so the base was not apparently out of, it was out of code because it was too narrow and the billings were too, not you deep. Yeah, something just in pre-construction condition, any special erosion controls, yeah. uh, you know, based on that site, site yeah. visit is okay. appropriate. Okay. The only conditions I would add. Just point out the no-go zone to the contract. Yes, right. absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Amy, I can just have them contact you. I yeah, mean, we'll yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, do you guys want to further continue the request for a certificate of com compliance sure. to the next meeting? Yeah. They don't need to appear unless we have the information. Right. But why, why, we'll why bother doing yeah. that if we don't uh, yeah, we, want to wait till we get the decks? Because if we close it and deny it, then they're going to have to reapply for a certificate of compliance right. again. Right. We just leave it, just open. leave it open. Yeah, that's what leave I'm saying. It open. Yeah. 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 Leave it open. We'll yeah. see. We'll see you in June. <laughs> Thank you. But we can only continue it four weeks, two weeks at a time, right? Right. Yeah. So, right. So let's. We, if we go beyond the, the second meeting, we have to re-advertise and everything. So, we're just going to go two meetings just procedurally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So needs, yeah. But you don't have. You don't have to come here. You're, you're only going to have to be here if Amy asks you to show up. Right. right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. So 10, 10 11, right? To the no, 10, uh, the second 20, meeting. 25? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion? Second? Made, seconded. I seconded it. All right. That was on, all that was on discussion. And one abstention. That was an omnibus motion. An abstention. To a continuous? I'll yeah. vote to continue. Okay. <laughs> That's the same. Stick my neck out there. Way to work, Sean. Thanks. Next all one right. is uh, 242 1863 1000 Johnson Street. So this order was issued in February of this year, and it governed um, a number of um, exterior improvements to the house. It's an interior renovation, and uh, the contractors here, it is a flip. Um, some of the major things was uh, reconstruction of the front farmer's porch, uh, replace and enlarge the rear deck, Regravel existing driveway, um, install walkways and a dry well to capture roof runoff, um, installing a generator and um, replacing bulkhead doors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the, the work is complete and the site is stable. Erosion controls have been removed. Wetland markers are installed and the shed has been um, moved outside of the 50 foot no build zone. Um, the only deviations was that um, in, instead of uh, a gas line connection from the street, uh, based on National Grid's timing, uh, they had to move forward with a 1,000 gallon propane tank, which is outside the 50, and I administratively approved that, right? 100 gallon. 100 gallon. 100 gallon. Oh, why did, okay. So it's above ground on a pad. And it's on a pad. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's a okay. small tank. It's sorry, on a pad. I, know. And it's, I uh, added an extra all, zero yeah. there. Sorry. Your intention to when grid schedule allows to eventually connect the gas? Yeah, when I talk, when I spoke with them in February, they told me end of August. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke to them again in June, they said end of September, they might be able to get me in this year. And but the goal is to still put gas in? No, no. At You've this abandoned point, that? We've abandoned it. Uh, we went with, with heat pump um, uh, in, in the house. So the only uh, propane requirement is for the hot water heater and the gas stove top. It's a dual, dual fuel. So with the replacement of all the windows and the insulation that we did, um, the house is really tight. And actually, Joel has been involved in it uh, along the way. Um, it made sense for, for heat pump and less uh, dependency on gas. So. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I only asked that question because once we issue a certificate, this perm is closed. Yes. They can't come in and put gas in later on, but yeah, that's not Correct. your intention. That's not my, my intention, and I don't, I don't think they'll need it. It's, a, it's such a, a small amount of use for, for <clears throat> gas. Yeah. Also. No questions. No questions. Okay. Motion? Is 
recommendation is issue a full and complete COC. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that's unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Next one is small project NAC one uh, three fourteen eighty five for Conquin. All righty. All right. So this comes under a category B, which is in kind replacement of lawfully existing decks, regardless of size. The 12 by 21 deck, the stairs, and the footings will be replaced in the same footprint, and all are well outside the 50 foot no build zone. Uh, new footings will be two by two big foots at four feet deep, and they will be hand dug. Dumpster to be in the driveway, construction access through the driveway to the back of the house. Stockpile uh, is shown but may not be needed, and that would be on the driveway as well. Um, I did visit the property and found no violations and proximate edge of wetland to, um, you know, in line with what we're seeing on the as built plan. Um, the contractor's here if you have any questions for him, but I would say. Uh, I recommend that you find this to qualify as a Category B and approve the project with conditions that require a pre-construction meeting with the contractor um, prior to building permit sign-off, sign and then we can look at the need for erosion controls at that time. I'm, I'm thinking it's not probably not required. Um, and then all excess soil shall be taken off the site from the footings or outside the buffer zone if they're going to utilize that, and then a post-construction site inspection to verify compliance. Thank you. Jack? You know, are both the dumpster and the uh, stockpile located <coughs> on the driveway? Yes, they will be. Yeah. Um, the stockpile I usually bring stock as I need it, yeah. um, so I usually never really leave stuff on the site mm -hmm. um, unless I need it that day. Okay. I have no other questions. And your stockpiles, you know, lumber? And yeah, mostly. Not soils? Or no, no, yeah. just uh, framing materials, decking, and, you know, railings and stuff like that. This is before us because of riverfront only? It's, it's, all, it's all well inside the 100. Yeah, it's inside the 100 and in the outer riverfront. Because it's in the river. I'll catch you. Okay, that's it. it I have, I have buffer, no questions. But it's not in the 50. Yeah, perfectly doable. Yep. Yeah, also. Also. All set. Okay, motion. I move that we approve this as a category B with um, the conditions that Amy outlined. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, next one is 242-1858-189 uh, Willow Street. Request to continue till October 25th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Now I'll just get the other one out of the way. 242-1869-674 uh, Turnpike Street, request to continue to 1025. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Uh, next one is 242-1859-0 Turnpike Street. Peter Blaisdell from Williams and Sparagas. I'm uh, coming in off the bench for Sparagas who couldn't be here tonight. So, uh, I apologize. I don't know exactly where you left off or what you needed to uh, We had uh, two hearings and we were circling for the planning board's review and third party okay. back and forth. And uh, we understand that the, well, we know that the planning board has closed and issued their approval decision. They did, at last week's hearing. At last week's hearing, okay. yes. So um, my understanding is that they did close the hearing last week. Um, they were going to um, send over their results over to uh, Middleton, I think, just okay. for a review uh, with Katrina. And they had another hearing the, the night after. I did not go to that one, so I don't know exactly the status of that. The Middleton, you mean? Yeah, the Middleton I one. I don't know either. Yeah, so um, I'm just here to answer any questions if I can, or if you have any other outstanding issues that weren't addressed. My understanding was that there was a couple things that they were still working through, but I don't know that they were necessarily conservation issues. They were trying to figure out if they were going to loop the water, connect from Middleton to North Andover. Um, 
what we do is we go by Amy's recommendation, her recommendation at the end. Uh, she knows what, what, what's been outstanding, if there is anything outstanding. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll ask Jack if he has any questions. Um, I, I guess you, you may not know the answer to this, but uh, there was an enforcement order issued for um, some site work done within the buffer zone. I think it directed surface runoff to a spot where it shouldn't go, and um, I guess I'd like the status of that. To start. Was it issued from Amy? Or was it issued from Middleton? From the commission. Okay. Um, so when I had done my initial site walk with Greg Hockmith at the time, there was a rainstorm and we were at the tail end of it and there were piles of fill that were brought into the site and poorly managed and runoff was going down into the wetland and then into the brook. Um, so we had to issue an enforcement order, require them to manage that better install erosion controls and check dams and also we uh, prompted them to get their SWIP in place sooner than and later. There was a, there was a, was there a siltation pond? Yes. Okay. Yes. I did help on that, so I apologize. Yes. The, uh, yes. There yes. was a, there was a siltation pond, I believe, that was designed and submitted <laughs> right. for review and that was put right. in place. And my understanding is that hasn't been a problem since? I have not heard, I mean, Thor Akerley yeah. is the monitor for SWIP. And, you know, he's reporting that he's monitoring it, you know, per the SWIP requirements. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe there's been any issues since that. You're getting those written reports? Not. After the gully washes that we've had, every single one of which would have triggered a written report? He hasn't forwarded them to me, but. I'll, I'll check on them. Yeah, yep. we need to hear about that. Okay. Yep. It was certainly a great summer to have. To see if they work or not. To see if drainage systems work. And I think I think the grade for the whole state might not be that well, not very well. But it's kind of crazy this summer. Okay, is the water going to the proper place now? Is yeah. that, has it been corrected? Um, it was, yes. The ravine? Yes, it was. That, the, that um, sedimentation basin was constructed to, yeah. to address yeah, it was, that. Yeah, it was, it was set up to catch anything and then if there was any type of overflow, it would go down crushed stone swale um, after everything had settled out. But I, yeah, and then, was, and then a couple series of uh, hay bale. Um, it was being cleaned up. To the okay. so. But I, I will check on the written reports from Thor to see if I can get those sent over to you. Thank you. No other questions? Joe? It's one of the perils of continue, 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 continue. This has got to be almost a year, if not more. A number of months. Dozens of months. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're coming to the end of it. And my recollection is that there was so much hanging in flux because we had no idea what the ultimate requirement, they really had no idea what Elton was going to wash out a planning board on either side. Right. And what they thought was their best, the applicant and the engineers thought was their best attempt at doing what they wanted to do in this design. What I have no idea is how much this plan, does this represent what went to the yes. planning board and not yes. the interim approved? I, yes. I believe so. Right. And yes. TEC. And we've, we've compared that against what our last version was? Yes. Yeah, my understanding is there was TEC uh, who was hired to do the peer review. Um, all, all the issues with them had been yeah. resolved. Resolved. Yeah. Okay. So this plan you're seeing is a, is a culmination of that review. And, a, and but all through the planning board, but does it differ? I mean, not visually, it doesn't look like it differs much. It doesn't look like it no. does, yeah. No. No, and I could see Joe, um, right, in, if you can see right there, uh, Unit 10, see that little cross-hatched area? One of the things they wanted to know um, is could a fire truck oh, get down yeah, between that's... the buildings and do a three-point turn and then get back out, which I've never actually had to do before. So what ended up actually happening was we ended up taking um, 35 feet out of that last unit there so that a, a fire ladder truck could pull in back up and get back out. So that... That, to my knowledge, is the, is the latest plan. And that's as a result of the planning board requests. And that was one of the things that was hanging, hanging out there because it didn't look like the traffic pattern would have worked for, for emergency apparatus. Yeah, it was, that's all been resolved. And, yeah. and the planning board's review was what we would have required any. So their review served both purposes. Absolutely. Okay. I have, yep. I have no detailed questions until I ramp up on what we have. But I'm up to speed on what, what this is in front of us now. 
I have no questions right now. Uh, I just have one. It, how are you making out on the Middleton side of this project? Uh, I haven't had anything really to do with the Middleton side. I've only been here twice. Uh, my understanding is it's, it's, I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel, so hopefully this will be off everyone's board. I, if, if you're talking about the conservation, I'm either not 100% either, sure. Either you have to go in front of planning and conservation mm -hmm. with them? I believe so, yeah. Well, my, my question is. And Board of Health. My question is, if we're going to approve this plan, if, if Middleton's zoning and or Middleton planning, planning a change the uh, uh, plan, it might affect our side of the plan. So uh, Gene and Wright brought that up last week with the board, and they all had the same concerns you do, that if you approve a plan and Middleton makes a change, um, you know, how is that going to affect? But it, it sounds like Gene has been in touch with Katrina over at Middleton, and the idea is that if, if something did change on one plan, that everybody would get the same plan. So both plan and, and uh, there could be an amendment made to the, uh, to the permit. Now my problem is it, would, it could change, potentially change the stormwater plan for this project. I, I don't believe there has been any uh, discussion about changing the, the drainage systems. As like I said, uh, TEC did have all the reviews, and my understanding is everything's been for, clarified. For both towns. I believe they did. they did. So we have the same third party review for both? For both towns. This application? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've had it happen for we're two different, two different it's, it's a nightmare. Well, that, but that helps. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Sean? No questions. Brian? No questions. Okay. So, I've looked at it a little bit. So you mentioned Board of Health when one of my colleagues asked the question of various boards and commissions. Uh, this is on septic? It is. It is? Yeah. In, in Middleton. In Middleton. In Middleton. So in Middleton. the area that we see, that's stormwater infiltration in the back. If you can slide up, Aiden. Yeah. That's stormwater infiltration there, correct? Yes. Okay. And it's, the, nowhere, near, and it's nowhere near the septic. No, the septic, if uh, Amy does that great job Office of panning, side, right, right there, right in the middle. Of it. That's, that, I believe, is the, uh, the septic. Where? Right there? I believe that is, yeah. It actually has very, um, for the size of this building, it actually has very small uh, daily flow uh, per use, so. so here's, the, here's the rub on that one. <coughs> Talk about jurisdiction. So we have a septic system under Middleton's Board of Health mm -hmm. with their, you know, hopefully they're adhe adhering to you know, groundwater migration from the septic system adjacent to that detention pond. Bad enough, but that's in Middleton as well. However, the overflow from that detention pond is back into North Anna and into this. So I, in the review of the septic has been completed as, re, as well, or did TEC limit itself to things other than Board of Health? I don't think it, no, it didn't, it didn't review the uh, septic. So. So we, have, we until that septic system is approved by Milton Board of Health, we have nothing to talk about because it's pretty close to that detention pond, which finds its way back this way. I don't. Uh, so there's a there's a new uh, agent in Middleton since Derek Folsom left. Uh, her name's Tracy Mello. I don't know if this has been approved or not, but I can I can find out I for you. I don't know. But I know that the North Andover's Planning Board decision requires that. Approval of the septic also be done by our Board of Health. Which hasn't been done yet? No. All right, so I have no further questions until the next time to come back. Yeah, all right. I just said we have something outstanding from this different department. I'm yeah. reluctant to approve anything. Okay. So? Do you guys have any, any other issues aside from the septic for interaction with? No, I. Uh, they, they, they eliminated the fire issue. Um, we just have to find out that it doesn't matter really about the supply of the water. Right. But the septic system is, like uh, Joe says, if the overflow goes back into our town, that, that's an issue. Do we have an OM plan? Yes. Yeah. You do? Yes. And that was issued, I mean, that was Published reviewed. back in the beginning, right? Yeah, oh, that was, was also reviewed. reviewed. Oh, everything was reviewed. The whole kit and caboodle. Okay. What about the SWIP? Are we getting the information? We're, we'll be getting reports. We haven't gotten it yet? No. Okay. No waivers requested? No. 
So my question is two weeks or four weeks? It all depends on what <laughs> health does in Milton. Awesome. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I always feel that I feel like four weeks gives us more breathing room and time, but so that's moved. just I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. We already got, we got a right? second before the Yeah, he seconded. Okay. Okay. Can't, can't, can't take it back. I can't take it back. I saw him. Second. I heard him. It was so fast. I thought he was clear. That was pretty quick. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. So continue to what date? Ten twenty-five. Okay. And in the meantime, we should get some SWIFT reports. And you're going to uh, oh the, uh, the, from Thor from Thor yeah no problem and you're well. going to talk to not the end of his board health about yes. reviewing yes the septic system and you'll find out where it's at with Middleton all righty thank you everybody thank you thank you <coughs> next one is <coughs> fourth order uh, 350 Sharpness Pond Road. Commission issued an enforcement order for uh, an installation of a shed and some grading and a small retaining wall at the end of the um, driveway. Uh, commission required that the shed be moved uh, and then uh, shrubs be planted within the area of disturbance by yesterday or today and that was done early September actually so we have the shrubs are in um, I plan to work with the homeowners on the best location for the wetland markers um, and the shed is on the other side of the house um, so we're in good shape I would say keep the enforcement order in place because there is a two-year monitoring requirement for the uh, plants and then um, we'll revisit it at that point but no action for you tonight, just wanted to update you. Thank you. Jack? Once well, there's no action, no action taking your recommendations, right? Well, just update. They're following what they need to do. I wish they went all that smoothly. <laughs> Things are moving along. Okay. So we're good. Yep. That's not quite a vote. <laughs> The recommendation is to keep the enforcement order in place and, and over the next two years. Is yeah. That what you recommend? The plans will be monitored per the enforcement so that'll order. That will be my motion. Yep. Second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, that stand. <clears throat> next one is 196 Marble Ridge Road. Okay. So this is um, the violation that involved installation of a. Um, some catch basins and a Long like drainage. drainage right exactly um, so I met with the homeowner and his contractor uh, on September 8th we went over all of the direct directives of the enforcement order I staked out where the wetland markers will go uh, plants were ordered uh, and at least two have been installed by now wetland seed mix are, is ordered and they do have it in hand um, the weather uh, has been soggy. The site conditions haven't been conducive to getting a piece of equipment down there. Um, but they're all ready to go once the conditions improve, and she hopes to have everything completed by October 11th. So you guys didn't give um, a specific deadline in this enforcement order. We wanted to just have an update at this meeting on their progress. So they have all the pieces in place, and... Um, they're ready to go once soggy conditions abate. So, so, you, want to, so you want to continue? I yeah, should, to I the 11th. Put a date sensitive on this one. Because well, are, Amy wants <coughs> it to go to the 11th. I didn't see that. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Let me well, see. just at least let's continue to the 11th and see where they're at from there, and then. And then we can talk about a, a hard deadline if we if we need There's to. There's no filing. Everything's being done right. under the enforcement order. Right. But they're working on it, right? Yeah. They're not. Oh yeah, no, they're, they're, they're not, not sitting on their thumbs. No. So, yeah. 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 That's why Nick yeah. updated yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Next one is. 
God bless you. Thank you. Easy. Next one is, um, I know it's Winter Street, 863 Winter Street. All righty. All right. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so the commission will call issuing an enforcement order um, for the installation of hardscape without a permit within the buffer zone, um, partially in the 25 and um, a bunch of it in the 50 to a BBW um, and the Homeowner has engaged Norris Environmental uh, to help them address the enforcement order, but they have a proposal. They floated the idea with you a couple of meetings ago about a possible conservation restriction. You were open to hearing a proposal, and so they've submitted one for you. And, um, Maureen from Norris is here, and the homeowner, Celio, is here as well. So good evening everyone. Um, the proposal in front of you this evening is to remove everything within the 25 foot no disturb. Um, so that would include portions of the flagstone uh, pavers, a masonry wall, sink, and counter. Um, we'll remove these items, we'll restore the 25 foot with native plants throughout. Um, in addition to that, we're proposing to possibly keep the hardscapes within the 50-foot no structure. Um, this may be an unconventional proposal. I don't know if the commission has been approached with a proposal as this. And we're proposing a six-acre conservation easement on the property. In your packet, I have an assessor's map the assessor's map shows the property itself abuts conservation or North Andover trails, the Bruin Hill Trail. Um, the plan itself that I included in your package shows the conservation easement. We are proposing it along the northerly portion of the property where I think it would nicely connect to the Bruin Hill Trail system. From the trail map itself that's included in your package, it shows the trail ending. Now, I haven't been on that trail. I don't know if it act, you know, ends or it continues on elsewhere, but at least on this trail map, it shows that it ends. Um, my client is open to incorporating a trail on this easement, so it would provide a nice loop. Um, there's a parking location and entrance onto the Bruin Hill Trail further up Winter Street. And I think it would nicely loop back to Winter Street if the commission is open to this proposal. Um, my client is invested in his home. He's invested in this com community as well as his property. Uh, beautiful hardscapes on the lot. Um, possible we'd like to work with the Commission to keep these items on the property and um, hopefully you'll entertain the proposal in front of you this evening thank you Mary. Jack yeah, I'm just getting to the, to the large-scale yeah, plan my, my main question was how much how much is within the 50 foot right now like um, in terms of square footage of hardscape and what structures so on your plan <clears throat> the 50 foot is highlighted in a in a pink color yeah okay so we have um, a concrete block patio and fire pit um, that goes through the 50 foot we have a, a nice block wall with the counter on top that's shown in the pictures 
that's shown within the 50 foot. We have an artificial turf area shown in the pitches as well. That's within the 50 foot. Um, in addition, we have a concrete block patio, a stone masonry wall. It's maybe two to three feet high. And then we have a nice five foot high wooden privacy fence uh, between the 25 and the 50 foot. And these are existing structures? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the hardscapes, are they, are they permeable or not? So they're not permeable. As part of the proposal, we are proposing to infiltrate for the hardscapes. Um, the paver patio, if you look at the pictures, they have a artificial turf between them. Yeah. So I think it may be possible to remove the artificial turf and possibly provide infiltration. If that's not an option, we could do an infiltration trench, possibly. Um, certainly, those items would need to be looked at if the commission finds that um, this mitigation proposal is appropriate. Okay, and then just to be clear, um, there will be any encroachments into the 25 foot no disturb zone will be removed? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And restored with plantings. Yeah. And as we can also incorporate the signage, the commission likes to see as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no further questions. Joe? Um, I have a philosophical issue with contract compliance, and that's what this reeks of. And, you know, you got a violation and to get quid pro quo for getting an easement on a hunk of land that I don't see any clear benefit to is just something I'm dead set opposed to. So that's that's not, that's off the table for me. Um, I see this as a flagrant violation. And um, I also look at spot, I mean, there's insufficient information for me to have any more detailed conversation of what the solution is other than removing it, everything and restoring it. But I'm looking at grades that are out there, 220.87, 220 ish around the perimeter of the patio, yet the adjacent wetlands that is at 218 and 220. You're not going to get any infiltration, you're not going to get two foot of groundwater separation. So that, that doesn't work. So, I, I mean, it has to come out, and I want to see how it's going to come out. And in the meantime, until they have that answer, I'm, you know, I'm willing to consider other options if they want to engineer it. But Right now, it, it has to come out, in my opinion. I'm actually interested in the proposal. Um, I'm interested in that trail network and the, uh, and the conservation easement. Um, the reason I'm interested in it is because it, it, it's a normal practice for this commission to require or request mitigation in exchange for waivers. We do it all the time. We. Uh, we consider waiver requests. We don't always grant them, but we consider waiver requests when there is sufficient mitigation to make it palatable. Um, Joe's not wrong. This is a big violation. Uh, I don't disagree with him on that, but I'd like to give this uh, gentleman a chance to dig his way out of this um, so I'm not I'm not saying no, I'm not saying yes, I'm saying I'm interested in it. Okay. Uh, Maureen, how many waivers is you going to need to get this project approved? So the structures within the 50 foot would be the waiver. So it would be um, the fire pit, the concrete patio around the fire pit. Um, I, I don't know if artificial turf is considered a structure by the commission, maybe. Um, in the concrete patio, um, paper patio, and the five foot high wooden privacy fence. How, how long have you been coming before this commission? A long time. A long <laughs> but time. Now, I haven't been here for a, a bit. But, but I mean, I don't want to date yourself, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think you already have. No. She's been coming here longer than you, Louie. How long you been here? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, yes. Yeah? Really? The reason why I say that is, ten, all right, we'll say you just said 10 years ago. If, 10 years ago, if you brought this project up, requiring all these waivers and, and the construction of what you see, mm -hmm. you would probably even tell you, your client you're in trouble. Right. Okay. Uh, like I said, the, the kicker of it is, I know he didn't, maybe he didn't do it intentional, that's fine. But in the beginning, he actually showed when he purchased the land that the land was delineated. The, so he knew it was at fault, it was wrong before he even started. So I have a hard time granting somebody a waiver knowing that he was already in violation before he even started. Um, like you said, I, I would be reluctant to grant any waivers based on that, that, that he, and he supplied the documentations. So that he had, that he had, that it had been delineated, totally ignored it and built it anyways. So I, 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 I'm, I'm hesitant for the fear the, 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 the conservation restrictors is fine, but uh, I thought Joe said it doesn't go anywhere. Hmm? He said that, that, that trail doesn't go anywhere. I don't see any immediate benefit, tangential but benefit to it. No, there's, to it. there's connectivity. It, it, it picks up the rest of the trail network. Talking about land that's already vacant and unused, and probably always will be, and all we're going to, we're not going to add our, we're not going to put a dog leg onto our trail or an oxbow onto our trail. It's, it's simply going to be an easement giving us the preservation of what's going to be preserved as wooded area anyway. We get nothing for it. We get nothing. Well, isn't it, it, doesn't the trail network have the right to pass and repass, or is that a... Right, I mean, it would provide a loop back down to Winter Street, which I think has some value in I it. Didn't, did, I didn't see it going all the way back down to Winter. Well, that's where the property... So if you look at this 8.5 by 11... That one? Yes. The property is highlighted in red. So the northerly side, we could provide access. His, his house is shown on, on I guess it would be, I don't know, the L part, yes. but we could provide a loop back down to Winter Street. That, in my opinion, would be considered a value for people that use these trails and you can access it and walk back up Winter Street. In, and in addition to that... I'm missing that on the, on the bigger plan. It doesn't even show on the bigger plan? We have... Uh, so I've got up the, the trail map. So I saw that. So I guess I'm not seeing anywhere that... I'm just missing it. I, I, I guess I didn't mm -hmm. highlight it on this plan yeah, so that... Where is that easement? I, so I, the is house the, is next to that number eight on that portion. Right, I see. Yeah. And then the trail... The, uh, the proposed easement would go uh, in that area. In, in addition to granting the easement, we're willing to um, actually put in the trail as well. So I do know that um, this Bruin Hill Trail does meander down and connects to Foster. Okay. Underneath the power lines. Thank you, Amy. But that's Foster. I it, they didn't. It. They didn't finish. It, it picks up the power line. It does, this, and it the, and it shoots right down to Foster. I mean, that's. I, I know. It, it, I guess it's and something. If, if you're interested in it, it's a good. It's a good connection. Mm -hmm. I know it's a big ask. That's the trouble. It's a hard yeah. ask. What he's asking. And that's not as fun hiking through a power line. As the woods. <laughs> it's not as fun hiking through a power line than the actual woods. Well, I understand. Um, so would the proposed trail sort of um, go in the same direction as that brook that's shown on the uh, Friends of North Andover trails? So it, so it would be in that area. I haven't delineated any type of trail because I wanted to first get um, an opinion from the commission if this is an appropriate possible mitigation and 
for keeping the hardscape within the 50 foot. But it's something I can come back with if the majority of the commission finds that this may be appropriate. You guys all set? So let me back head on what I had said. So now getting a better indication by description of where that might be. The larger plan does show the easement, and I actually, this is oriented yeah, the opposite it's, direction yeah, than the is. other plan. Yes. If they turn it over, I can see where it does come down in winter more clearly. I mean, I'll go so far as to say, you know, I'll hold my decision off until I hear maybe some input from the uh, friends about the end of the trails to whether this is a, what, something that they consider to be an asset or not. If it supplements or augments their trail network and they see a benefit to it, then maybe I can be swayed. Um, it would be a through, I mean, that would be a terminus of, of a trail network. So there's no parking over there. Right. Nor do we want it. Um, I don't know if they want to provide parking, that would kill the Yeah. But I'm just looking. I, again, I have, uh, I'm looking I, at this. I'm not yeah, looking at the ground. I'm looking <laughs> at it from this map here, which isn't. Yeah. So that underlying concern of, I, I, I think, I see this as you know, contract compliance, you know, a, a violation. After the fact, you know, getting out of it. I, I mean, I do agree with Al that we bargain things in, on other projects right out of the gate. I don't think we ever, we're talking minuscule types of waivers, if any, and usually we're looking at density stuff. Well, I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. It's a big, as I said, it's a big ask. I, I'm, I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying I, I'm interested. Yeah. I mean, if, if Friends of North Denver Trails think this becomes an asset, I would, I can, I would want to hear more. I wouldn't rule it out at this point. John? Um, I'm, I'm not in favor of this. I don't think it's it's appropriate in this circumstance to this degree. We have violations, whether they be on the lake, that are enormous and other things, and people can't come and negotiate their way out of it by a trade or money, right? Whether it's a swap or, 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 or compensation. So that's kind of the way I look at it. I think it's a little dangerous area to go. I'm on board with you. I say I, I, I'm not going to go for the conservation restriction. I, I'm not going to be swayed for that. I think it's, as you said, quid pro quo. Other, it's not fair to other people who can't do this. It's also not replacing the functions and values of the area that was lost in any any means by any means. Um, you know, whether regardless of whether it was on purpose or not, I think we just have to look at it for what it is. Um, take away the intent. Look at the bylaw and do what's right. That's, that's my take. Okay. So where do we go from there? Yeah. You want it? Uh, I think part, part of what the commission needs to think about is what are the criteria for issuing a waiver in the first place? And um, the fact that you first try to avoid jurisdiction, and if you can't avoid, then you shrink it um, and if, but you if you have room to do your project out of the 50 or even out of the buffer that's what you do first based on what we see for lawn area behind the house I think there I think they wouldn't even pass the test in terms of I have no other place to do this so in other words what we do is make a motion to grant or deny a waiver and then they could continue, and then they can continue to design, redesign the project, move what they have to do to get everything out of where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing floating away before us. I think we can pull the board, and I think we've just done that to entertain and not entertain. And it would be clear on the jargon, it's it, conservation easement, not a restriction. It's well, not a CR because we can't hold it. Right? It would have to be. Yeah, we could. If he's. If we retained ownership, we'd be the holder of the CR, a conservation. What if he sure. sells it? No, it's it's on the books. The it it runs with the land. You know, a, but it also takes legislative approval. You just can't True. we, we, we no, Oh, right. I know. It's a big, yeah, long so process. We're talking an easement. We're no, not talking. So they easements extinguish. They do. They're, or we no. could do a deed restriction. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at Louie. I was looking at Louie. That, 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 that wasn't on a bar exam. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you I was, it's 99 years. I wasn't they, here for the last one. I think it's 90 some odd years as well, yeah. I think. They, All right, so you want to pull the, about a waiver? What, what, 
the way to grant the waiver on this project. That's the first thing. As is or, or as is. Well, as well, well, first of all, we, I think the first offer was: to, yeah. Would you be interested in entertaining a conservation easement? And I think, I think we can do it formally, but I think we just heard that's not going to pass. No. The polls are yeah. not going to entertain yeah. that. If you poll the commission, you'd find it's not. Okay, so, so okay. You know, that's the, that's been dispensed with. We are not going to entertain it. Okay. So the next question would be: Back, uh, back to the drawing. Yeah, give we, a chance to give them, give them a chance to go revise further. So we wouldn't approve anything that's in violation that we would that would require a waiver. Without mincing words, I mean, you have to do a viable alternatives analysis and prove there is no other alternative. But there are. So they're, they're I hate to say it, they're, they're this could have been done differently, and it still can be if that's what they want to do. There are other places in the yard they could do it. So it's not going to get a waiver. It's not even eligible for a waiver because it doesn't pass the alternative analysis. Right. Okay. So, what would you like to do? You want to with, withdraw without prejudice? No, you're under the enforcement. Just just nothing, nothing, nothing we need to come back to the commission, uh, you know, to just further mitigation plan and how to remove the material and uh, provide maybe a timeline or filing. Well, well, there wasn't any EO. They haven't filed for anything. No, but I'm saying, is that part of the EOs to, to file? No. To file something the, on how the to enforcement order this? required that, uh, with the assistance of a wetland consultant and or professional engineer, um, have a plan prepared that addresses the following: a plan and a narrative detailing the approach to remove the hardscape features, including all of concrete blocks, patios, flagstone, yada yada, yada, yada all, everything basically. So without. And then instead of this even further, the reality is undoing what's there is going to require an NOI. And doing whatever they want to do is going to require an NOI. We should require them to file an NOI with, was, with a yeah, deadline, a day certain. Yeah. Well, may I request that we do it under an enforcement order? No. I mean, you can request. No. Please. Well, <laughs> well the, re the reason for this, the reason for this request is obviously my client has invested a lot of money into his property. And now the commission made it very clear they want us to remove it, restore it. And I appreciate everyone being very candid. So there's no, there's no guessing on what the commission thinking is. But to come back with the notice of intent to say we're going to remove everything, that's an additional cost. So if we, if we could possibly do it under an enforcement order, that saves time, money, and effort yeah, to get please. this done. So what I'm trying to do is put the pause button on where we are. And someone's coming in and now says, I have some work I want to do within the jurisdictional area of the Laws Protection Act and your local bylaw. And these are the things I want to do. What should I do? You've got to file. You're working in the 50. You're working in the 25. You're going to be doing other act. You're undoing things to stabilize you and doing more things beyond that, all within jurisdiction. I mean, how can that be done under enforcement order? Enforcement orders are, are, are issued and work is performed under enforcement orders. It's just another tool as opposed to an order of conditions. But they're also used to motivate the filing of an NOI. And, 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 and in the MACC classes will tell you, enforcement orders are things you can work out administratively and, and it's pretty clear cut what you're going to do. There's a pretty big area here. This is something you couldn't condition in three, four, five, or six conditions. Now this is this is truly going to be an outlined order of conditions which doesn't belong in an enforcement order. We shouldn't be negotiating that through an enforcement order. We should be doing that through an order of conditions filed. Again, that's me. It's my yeah. opinion. It's just a lot of work. Amy, do you have any thoughts on one being more preferable than the other? I get both sides. I worry about issuing what's called a permissive permit under an order of conditions that can be appealed. So in the end, in the end, maybe uh, on, on our bylaw, they wouldn't win. But how long is that going to take if we have to go through that appeal process with a judge and I, all I that? Mean, we, could, we could put conditions into the enforcement order similar to it. Order of conditions, right? So I mean, it's as long as the enforcement order is strictly to resolve the violation and not any additional work beyond that, right? Then any number of conditions can be put into an enforcement order. So the plan that's before us is a swimming pool plan. 
made right. it. Right, which was year. out of the bunker. That's what started. Tickling the edge. It's it, right. Yeah. Have they started that work yet? No. But, oh, yeah, they don't. But all the all on. the survey, all the information is there except for the deep. If they wanted to do this as part of that, they would simply would have put the detail on it. I I think all the baseline work is there, you know, from an engineering perspective. I I, I just don't see this being a hardship to for us to do the solid reinforcement on it. I mean, if this was not in the twenty five, this was not any of it in the fifty. This is something that if the commission chooses to go that route, I won't have a permit until after Thanksgiving at the earliest, and he won't be able to start work until early December after the appeal period. Because I have to submit the permit two weeks in advance, get in but front the of the stable. commission. The site's built and stable. So what are we gaining by getting it done quickly? Well, you know? then it's done. Or, or we wait until next we file I file a notice of intent I'm and you wait until next year to but do, I, to do it right and have a, a, a sunset on July 1 is better than doing it in enforcement or in, 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 at the risk of having this thing unstable throughout the winter you know, construction done hastily and, and unstable in the winter I I'm off my horse it's tired <laughs> I think the thing the question that you need to be asking is is this approvable at any level because if the, the consensus that I sensed from my fellow commissioners is what I think it is I sense it's not approvable I agree um, so before you put a lot of time and money into a design plan you should consider how to make it an approvable design plan because I, I heard I heard at least three commissioners here say they're not voting for a waiver. So um, that's a decision that that you're stuck with to decide how to guide the, the client. Well, ideally, I'd like to resolve it under an enforcement order. I, I disagree with Commissioner Lynch respectfully. I think if I could get uh, the other commissioner's opinion on that, then I'll yeah. know which direction to guide my client. Okay. I kind of agree with what you said. We can condition, make conditions on the enforcement order. As long as it's, <clears throat> it's only specific to resolving the violation. So it, it can't approve any other work beyond just removal of whatever's needed right. to resolve the violation. The resolving can, violation isn't um, re-landscaping afterwards or, or doing anything. We can, can, we can condition what, it looks, <clears throat> what, the, what the resolution looks like, similar to an order of conditions. Well, Clarify what you just said because I think I understand it, but I'm not sure everybody understands it. Maybe I'm wrong. If they were to take out everything that's in the 50 and everything that's in the 25, if that's what's necessary, and they want to push it outside the 50 to make it not need a waiver, it still needs an NOI. Yes. You wouldn't approve that under an enforcement order. You'd have to get it out of the 100. Right. Is what I just heard you say. No, I'm, just, I'm saying to remove the remove everything out of the 50 and the 25 and restore it to natural conditions can be conditioned under the enforcement order. But not, <clears throat> but not relocate the stuff that's there. Into Correct. Another it's only only to resolve the actual violation. What you what you're talking about is what I said. Anything right. beyond resolving the violation cannot be done under the enforcement. And that's not what I'm hearing. They want they want to have this landscape in in place here, and if not here, maybe adjacent to here. They'd have to move it outside the hundred. Yeah, so, so in terms of the enforcement order, all I'm saying is isolating, compartmentalizing just the violation, right? We can condition that under an enforcement order to restore it back to natural conditions. Anything beyond that is, 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 is potentially up to a notice of intent, RDA, all that stuff. So if they wanted to move this stuff and elsewhere into the 100 foot buffer zone, absolutely we need an application for that. So, so are we talking just, just, we just talk about the 50 and 25? Because the violation is everything inside the 100. Work activity within jurisdiction is a violation. If they want to bring the site into compliance, all they have to do is get the stuff out of the 50. Yeah. Then it's in compliance. Because they did all that work in jurisdiction without an filing an NOI or having an order of conditions. If they get outside the 50, the, there's no, no, where's the violation? We're working with 100. Without a permit. Oh, you say saying without, without, yeah. without a permit. They, they, they did with us without a permit. Right, we'd be an after. Yeah, I, I, I say it's, it's take it all out. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right it requires an NOI. Well, we're 
we're discussing this, and we're discussing a hypothetical situation. We don't know what they want. Well, well we know what they want. They want to keep what they have. But if, but if, they're, if that's not going to happen, um, we don't know what they're going to come back with to make it compliant. Um, once we know that, I think we're in a much better position to decide whether it's an EO or an NOI. One piece of information that I meant to ask that I, I don't know, maybe I do, maybe it's in our packets I've overlooked, is what was it, what was the pre-existing condition? What did it look like before? That's right. I think That's we've it. got a picture of it right, right there. Now. Yep. And I don't know how long yes. that patio was there, that globular shaped patio. Yep. I, I'm not sure. But that's what it, that's what it was before well, all of the work in the Yep. Is that a shed 50. in the middle of the backyard? What is that? Is maybe a play yeah. structure or something? Yeah, play structure. The rectangular. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a play structure. I think at the time. Oh, play structure. Okay. We're going around and around. Yep. So the book, contention of the commission is what Ryan says as far as keeping the EO, EO and making conditions of removing all the stuff that's in the 50 yep. to the, to the what, and the 25. Yeah, I see what you're saying, though, yep. in terms of the all activity inside the 100 has to come out. But, but I do think it, 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 this can be part of, a, a, of an EO um, that, that, you know, um, well, to take everything outside the 100 out now versus... And only that. Get it to the 50 and then come in front of us with what you're going to do with it now. Yeah, to approve whatever, yes. everything between 50 and 100. Right. If, right. Assuming we would have approved that. Anyway, yep. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So yes. still, there's still eventually is a filing. There is going to be a filing, but not to get the crap out of there. Not the crap. The beautiful stuff that's there <laughs> out of that's there. Really beautiful. And yeah. um, and um, right. but once that's out, to go ahead and have anything that's been put there approved, it's going to require some kind of filing, and after the fact filing right. or uh, more modifications. To and they'll exist. and they'll probably want to redesign based on all these things that they had over here. They're going to want to. Reincorporate into the proposed pool area, so we're, that's going to look different, I'm sure, yep. and part partly in the buffer. But I think like the existing patio is out of the 50. What we see there, it is out of the 50, so it would have been approvable. Yep. So if they take everything out to the 50, and then. We say they can like stockpile those materials outside of the 100 to reuse later, and they have an after the fact for the stuff from the 50 to the 100, mm. and then reapply with a new plan for the pool and all the, all the material seat. that they were able to save. Yeah. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I think so. Prior filings, this happened, this was built under an order originally, right? Yeah. The house, yes. And they got a certificate of compliance. Yep. And they're outside, just barely outside the 50, so they did everything when they built the house properly. Yes. You have an affidavit when they bought it that knows that when the line was, and that it was subject to an order of conditions. Someone said there was evidence that they knew this. Before they bought the house, yes. they engaged Steve Erickson of North Environmental to delineate the wetlands okay. to talk about a pool. Notwithstanding, they had an order conditions and certificate of compliance that was recorded against I'm the property. Sure, that was part of the. So it was, it was there for the record for the world to yes. know. Um, I, we found I, out I, about when they applied for the pool. What's that? We found out about it when they applied for the pool that the, that the wetlands had been marked. And they knew that. Oh, just for them. You, they right? applied for the pool, which was outside the hundred. Form you, you got as normal review. You went and looked at it and saw this other stuff. Right. Okay. So my next question is: Are we going to make it date sensitive? We can. Huh? We can. I know yes. we can. I know we can. <laughs> so hold on. What? No. What 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 are you doing? What are you going to do? Are you going to file, or do you no. need to get back and talk to your client? I'd like to talk to my client, Continue but I think this. we will be doing an after the fact filing for work within between the fifty and the hundred. So, she needs some time. 
you need you need need two weeks. Can I have two weeks, please? Can you what? Can she I wants, please she have, have two, two weeks. weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks or two meetings. We two. meet the next meeting's two weeks. Yes. Can you talk, so that's fine. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, that's fine. And at least I Th can. Then give you the can tell us what you, what, what you, which way you're going to go. Right. I think that's reasonable. Okay. So, so what are we doing with the current enforcement order? Is it staying in place? It stays in place. And she's well, coming back in two weeks to, to advise us. Coming back in two weeks for what? Well, yeah, to, I mean, I, know. I, 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 I would don't think that we, we, we would have an enforcement order and tell them what we want in That's two like weeks, five, right? I mean, what do you want in two weeks? She, well, she's going to let us know if she's going to file an NOI. But we don't want that. Not right now. We want them. That's, we want, that's the, we want the violation. Yeah, we got to get them to clean the place up. She can't file anyways with an outstanding violation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Status quo is stable. There's no threat. It's as bad as it is. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, so yeah. I don't see going to the next meeting and the meeting after that while they get their ducks in a row is good, but I think there needs to be a deadline at some point. What they need to do, yeah. if we want to issue an enforcement order, we need to, they need to come back with a game plan right. on how so, so to... That's what they, so, by, so by the next meeting, so you want this enforcement order to be um, in addition to what exists, that by the next meeting they provide what? They provide a narrative that details... The means and methods of removal, and then we can set the date. And re restoration of the twenty-five. <coughs> and then we can set the date then of removal and what? Uh, removal and restoration of, of the areas that were disturbed areas. Disturbed areas. Okay, so and then we can set a date and add conditions at that time. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Because yep. yeah, she can't file for an NOI until the, the violations. Yeah. Right. No, but I but I heard conversation from, from the board here that. They, if they got the stuff out of the 50, it's still a violation, but then they could file an NOI to talk about the jurisdictional area. Correct. So I guess the sequence of events was, was a little confused then. Yep. So we have to make the sequence clear to the applicant. Yep. And I think I think the thought is, and I'll try to move this, so I move that uh, we maintain the enforcement order that's in a place, but that we amend it by ordering that by the next meeting, the applicant provide us with a narrative of the means and methods uh, for removal and uh, remediation or restoration of the disturbed area. Anything else? No. Okay, that's my motion. Second. All of the favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, that's unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Next one is T41 Mass Ave. Uh, okay, so this is, um, so we gave them an extension for the notice of intent. They are working directly with uh, Morin Cameron Group, received communication from John Morin today stating that um, with the issues of the runoff coming from Waverly, they have a little more work to do for assembling the plan and they anticipate getting the filing in um, for the deadline for the 1025 meeting. So, you know, they're they're not dragging their heels. They're they're just working through some issues, and part of it is working with DPW and roadway runage runoff that goes into their property. So, but the so site I would the site stable. Yeah. Okay. So, so just maintain the EO that's in yep. effect. So moved. Second. All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next one, aye. Next one is 27 Child Street. Commission aye. issued an enforcement order that allowed for bolstering and extending the coil logs, uh, install, installing some extra silt fence along the um, areas that are breakout and a required notice of intent be filed by today. We did receive an electronic version of the notice of intent. We have the paper plans in hand. We'll receive the rest of the paper copies tomorrow in time for uh, legal pub legal ad publishing in the newspaper. So they'll be on for the next meeting. So they're in compliance. Mike, I have just a quick question. Why why is uh, if it's if the uh, enforcement order against Ch 27 Child Street shouldn't it be just Lawrence Airport? Street? No, it is against Lawrence Airport. It's, it is. We, it's. I don't know. We we just kind of kept the 27 Charles because 
they're they're like the impact property. Yeah, but I, I don't think that, so, should be, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be on. No, that won't be with the notice of intent. Okay. Because it gives it makes it look like they're part yeah, of it. No. Yeah. I, I, okay. Point taken. So we've just received the NOI. Obviously, it's not even in the system yet. Uh, For DEP? Yeah. Probably not. But and I'm I, sure. And uh, Randy Christensen retired, but he's staying to, to handle this. Is yeah. he really? I didn't hear that. That's good. That's, That's good, good news. news. That's good news. What's that? Institutional knowledge is always good. Well, I mean, he, he, he built it, so he should he's be able well, to fix it. Well, let's not kid each other on this. This is not, not 100 of that. This is not a real problem. Oh, that's I agree right. with you. That's exactly right. This is not a. This has been a. This has problem. been a town neighborhood problem for for 75 years or more. more. The airport is a small piece of this. Yes. And everybody is, is you know wants to blow up the airport. Look, you take a real good hard look at the whole Shh. water system there. Don't say that. That's that's yeah. You should <laughs> roll <laughs> 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 to get mad at the airport. So that's all they do. <laughs> Oh, yeah. water. You want to have your, your ex fellow wise so state troopers on. coming in and taking you out in cufflinks. But you all understand what I'm saying. You all understand okay. what I'm saying. Oh my God. Uh, we do. Yeah, we do. Right. At the meeting, at the meeting, the last Warm meeting, I, I must have said that about seven times. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all was, count. So we were no count. We, 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 uh, in fact, Sean was count. It was more like a dozen times. <laughs> Maybe. So just want to be. I don't not going to debate this tonight, but we got to be real clear on. What is the scope of third party review, if any? There needs to be that's some. That's right. And where the hell's the line drawn? I mean, what do we obligate yeah, because that's the airport for, and what do we obligate others that's for? That's an no, entire system it. that, I that yeah. there's I a know. lot of different paths to that that's system. That's to be tackled. Mm -hmm. I All get right. It. So we're leaving this as is for now. Yes. Okay. okay. Next, last but not least, not least, is 49 Court Street. Oh, boy. So, uh, enforcement order for importation of fill and cutting of trees um, through enforcement action. The site is stabilized. I mean, the slope is stable. Um, the top of the slope is still sandy, muddy. They haven't done anything with it. They want to do a patio that's what she told me anyway the homeowner it's stable even after the early well, august period. yes i was Stay i was stable. i was out after the horrible windstorm when all the trees came down but that slope is stable so that's a good thing um so she wanted to fill out the notice of intent herself i think she got a look at the checklist and the and the process and then went back to her wetland consultant who is um, fairly booked and won't be available to her till the end of October. Um, but what she wants to do is just seed it so it gets grass for her backyard or for the top of the slope um, and then figure out what they want to do vis-a-vis -vis finances, so. It's all well and good, but the total slope's in violation, right? Um, that's uh, we were talking about stabilizing what's there. That's a good thing. Yes. But what's there is in violation. Well, yeah. So it would be after the fact permitting for the fill that fell sh just short of the um, 25. Didn't need to get this. That I'm doing this. It's, it's it's so old that I don't need to get into this. Yeah. But, but I mean, if it's stable. If it's stable. If it's, it's stable, let's just no huge rush. But and it's it's the end of September. We, we shouldn't be doing anything next summer. Yeah, we shouldn't even be thinking of anything there. Just let it, let it stabilize and freeze over. But we should be having her pursue an NOI or some kind of plan on. Well, I think they are. I, I think well, they are, right, well, I, I think Amy? I think they are pursuing an NOI, right? Yeah, if they want to work with their what well, consultant. I, I think. So, I, I think at some point they should at least file the NOI. Then they get three years to do what they want. At least we have something on file. Just, just keeping uh, an enforcement order out there in the stratosphere doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. We pretty much, it's pretty much act, it's no, act being no action. We're not doing anything. The when finances allow concerns me too. So, what, what does that mean? So, that so she plans to see the backyard oh, yeah. until she can figure out <clears throat> what she wants to do when finances allow. Well, what, what does that mean? Never. 
perhaps. Uh, right? You know, that's just obscure. Yeah. We could we could give a, a deadline for filing an NOI, but that's, I wouldn't. That's what I think. I, I wouldn't go beyond that. No, I mean, no, I, yeah, I yeah. agree. I'm just saying, just so just so she doesn't get the impression that time is a luxury here, right? Right. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's, at a certain point, actions have to be taken. In an, after the fact NOI, which results in the after effect order conditions. Be, just because a order conditions expires after three years doesn't mean it can't it will expire after three years doesn't mean it can't expire sooner we can order that this work be done under an order condition special condition that says mm -hmm. it must be completed within one year yeah you can write an enforcement say order saying that absolutely yep. Oops. so you know yep. i think the end product is what we should be looking for not so much rushing them along this time of year no i don't think we should have them do the work but at least let them file so if he's not available to November, I mean, I'd, I'd give him, I'd give him three or four months to file. So this, so what? So December's meeting? Well, it's September. We only have one, because then it'd be one in October. Actually, one in November, one in December. So yeah, give him the one meeting in December. Yeah. To to file in time. To file, to be heard. To file an NOI. Okay. Thank you. To file, to be heard of me. To be heard about an NOI, because they can't file an NOI because right. they have an open violation. But we're telling them to file an NOI. Yeah, it's part of the, uh, per, but that's per the, the EO. EO. We're, 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 we're saying as part of the EO, yeah. you, you will file an NOI. So they can't. We just went through this with the other one. I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to rehash it. We're putting the cap before the horse. No, I, I understand. The EO probably already requires filing an NOI. We're just putting a date on it, I believe. Right, exactly. I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now we have that date. So now we have a date. So I move to amend it with the date. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Um, just quickly, oh. hunting dates this oh, year. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, that's about okay. About just. I'm not it's October this, 2nd through it. November 25th. Yeah. And we're, we're ready. Well, we're well yeah, both season opens next week. Right. And then shotgun season opens uh, the first week in December, or the first Monday after Thanksgiving, whichever. Um, yeah. But we don't allow firearms on our properties that we permit. Our, our properties that we permit, the commission, are all archery, the archery it, only. The only one we do is Half Mile Hill. We don't issue anywhere else. What about Town Farm? I thought, I, I thought we issued for Todd Farm. And I didn't know it was restricted to both. It's, it's, it, yeah, we don't, we don't authorize Half Mile it. Hill is the only permit process that we have. Permit process, but I think you're allowed to hunt. I mean, oh, yeah. There are other properties. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to hunt sure elsewhere. No, but on, on, but, our, on our property. But, but there's on other, our there, property. there are other yes. properties that we, the commission, oversee. Oversee, yeah. and we we've in the past allowed hunting on them as well. I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You just talked about the permit uh, aspect. Right. Okay. It's sorry. Just, yeah, but, no, okay. it's all right. It's just we have a spe we have a special permit process for Half Mile Hill. We do. And I can tell you that the surveys that come back that hunters hunt there they they don't harvest anything ever. One of that. Too many dogs. Well. Too many people. Yeah. Well, the, the, the too many people. That's plan. what they say. I don't the, know. That's true. That's a different I, season. I agree. <laughs> and, uh, well, there's 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 a lot of human interference too, which which is illegal, but it's it, it, it's done. And um, I'll leave it at that. So does that require a vote? What? No. Okay. So now I can I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Yeah. Segundo. Second. Second. Uh, All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous.